Good morning and welcome to another episode of the Digital Learning Lab. My name is Stephen Stone. I am the EdTech Training Coordinator. Uh, before we begin this session, we would like to go over one housekeeping tip. Let's practice um, how to be a good digital citizen uh, when you're in the chat. In the chat, you are allowed to ask questions and communicate with the presenters. The Digital Learning Lab is for learning. I shouldn't say any more. But now since uh, we have that out, out of the way, we would like to introduce you to Ryan, Amy, and Tammy. Take it away, ladies, it's all yours. Trio, who are going to turn you into master slide makers. So to begin with, I have two of my amazing friends with me here today. And they are going to introduce themselves and tell you what they're going to do with you to turn you into Google Techie Sue. So go ahead. Hi, I am Mrs. McLaughlin. And today um, I'm going to kind of show you guys the ins and outs of being a Google Slides master um, and mastering the master slides. I think I said master way too many times. Um, and then we're also going to look at um, inserting a GIF into your slides, as well as uh, linking to multiple slides within a slide deck. It'll be fun. Sounds awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. Kiner. Welcome back if you joined us um, last time, and we're glad you're back. And I'm going to be sharing with you um, some really cool tricks like how to create a silhouette and inserting images and doing some different really fun things like um, what's called a mask. So we're gonna learn um, a lot with images with my part. And I am Mrs. Ferguson and my job is going to get you started so that you can jump into those tricks that we have up our sleeves. So welcome. Let me go ahead and begin by sharing with you that we're going to be starting with our uh, you, sorry, I'm messing up here, guys. Just bear with me. I'm right here. <laughs> we are going to start by sharing with you how to use the YouTube live as a benefit of a learning tool. So to start with, this is us right here. And when I push play, that's going to pop up where we are live. So this is our live stream. The first thing I want to point out to you is that I paused our live stream. And if you're watching it, you can back it up as well. If something needs to be said to you again, you don't have to ask us to repeat it. You just simply need to back it up. Another cool thing about this is that you have a playback speed. It defaults to normal because most people are normal, but some of us are a little less normal. So if you like to hear people talk much faster than normal, this kind of gives you the chipmunk sound. But for those people that can listen fast, you can certainly hear fast. And for those of you that need to slow it down a little bit, because maybe you think we talk too fast for you, you can slow it way down to about a quarter of the speed. Now, how many of you out there have slow internet right now? If you do, I have a solution for that too. So when you click on this again, there's a quality button right here and it defaults to the 480. If you click on it, you can actually lower it down to the 360 or 240. That means it uses less of your internet so that it doesn't buffer as much and freeze as much. And then you don't have your brothers and sisters and your mom and dad all yelling at you because you're using all the internet. So this allows you to use the lower bandwidth so that you don't have all the buffering. It still comes in nice on your small screens. I haven't used the 144. You can try that out if you want, but definitely the 360 and the 240 work on most people's internet. So that is something to think about when you're doing your YouTube live. So when you're watching today, if you feel like you need to back it up, or if you feel like you need to stop for something that you need to do, feel free to do so. It just means that you're going to be a little bit behind us, and that's okay. We have a few brain breaks to let you kind of catch up and listen to it a little faster if you want to when you need to back it up to get caught up. The only thing is that you can't go faster than our speaking voice at the live point. So you can't go faster than us because we're live. So thank you for being here today. And the first thing I'm going to do is get you started on your Google Slides. So to do that, I'm going to click a little plus button right here. And I am going to type in the words slides. 
dot new. So Mrs. Ferguson, I noticed you typed in slides dot new. Why didn't you go through like the waffle and then select slides and take that route? Awesome question. It's mostly because I'm super lazy. I just want to get right there. <laughs> She's so really not lazy. Right there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to decorate and do stuff on my slide. And I'm not sure if my buddies want to help me or not. You guys want to help me? Absolutely. How can we help? Oh. Yep. Well, I can begin by sharing it with you. So there's a big old share button right here. And so when I click on it, oh, I got to name it. What can I name it, guys? How about DLL2 or something? DLL2 or something. Got it. <laughs> okay. Being very specific here. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is each one of you has a Google credential given to you by your school district. It's not an email, but we're going to call it an email for our purposes today. So you simply type in the people that you want to share it, but you need to use their Google credentials. So I'm going to put Mrs. Kiner in there first and, or sorry, Miss McLaughlin in there first. Ah, make sure I got the right one. I think I do. And then I have Miss Kiner second. She's going to pop in. And now they have emails and they're going to get an email notification. Don't select this one for you because these email addresses are not really email addresses. They're not going to get an email notification. And then it's going to be really hard for you to find it. So you need to uncheck this box. And what will happen is it will pop right into their Google Drive and they can open it and join it with you. So for your purposes, please unselect this. But I'm going to select it because that way it's faster for them. It takes sometimes two, three, four, five minutes for it to pop up in their drive. So we want it faster than that. So I'm giving it to them by email. So once they get the email, they're going to pop in and I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I think the first thing I'm going to do, I really like this layout. So I'm going to uh, just get rid of these boxes. Delete. It's my favorite button. Did you know my delete button is like my most used button on my keyboard? Go on. I did not know that. Yeah. You can ask the people that I work with, stop deleting stuff. Just you know, Okay, so I see there's a little R that popped up right here. That means that Miss McLaughlin is in and we're just waiting for Miss Kiner. And while we're waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and add a text box. So I click on insert text box and then I tell it where I wanna go. Now there's lots of uses for slides. Now, one of the things that I've come to realize is that my own children have to make slides to kind of reacquaint themselves right now because they've been living at home. So their teachers ask them, hey, give us an all about you slide right now. So with that in mind, I'm going to do an all about me slide because it's all about me, right? So it is. I'm going to say, it's this world. We're just living in it. Yeah, you guys all just have to be all part of my little party. <laughs> okay. My name is, I just love all those little things. And of course, when I click off that, that's like super boring. Like, can I do something to make this better? What do you guys think? What should I do? Absolutely. Um, I don't know. Can you change the font or the color? Can you? Yeah. It defaults as Arial. Arial is like the most boring font on the planet Earth. Um, where is a fun font? Because we're all about fun here today. Oh, you know what? I think I need to get more fonts because those are super boring. So over the top, I can click on more fonts. And anytime you have a font, it clicks a little plus for you and you know you have it. So I'm going to pick lobster. And tell me when you guys see a fun font. Ooh, righteous. This one's righteous. I like that acne one too. It looks bubbly and fun. Okay, where's that? Right there. Oh. Up, up, up. Oh, down. Down. If it was a snake, it would bite me. Where is it? How about you go up in the little search bar up at the top and type in Acme. A -C -M -E. Okay, spell it for me, baby. A-C-M-E. A-C-M-E. Oh, okay. There Boom. it is. That's Yay. like your favorite font. I was wondering which one you're always using. Yep. Because she like always picks those ones. Okay, so we will do that. 
And my name is, and we will pick one of those new fun fonts that we picked. And it should be, let's do your Acme, because that's like your favorite thing. Oh, look, it's up the top. It's alphabetical. And I think I'm going to make that super big. Maybe not that big, this big. So I just click on the little down arrow. Nah, that's not big enough. It needs to be way bigger than that. Maybe that big. 96, I can deal with that. There it is. Okay, black and white people, are we gonna go with that or are we gonna change color? I mean, you know my favorite color is teal, so I'm cool with teal. Yeah, uh, cause you're cool with teal, I'm gonna pick a totally different color. Than <laughs> oh, thanks. I really okay, like so purple. I don't see the color up here. That means it's hidden away right in these three little dots. So when I click on the three little dots and I click on the A, it says text color. Did you know if you put your mouse over top of them, it just tells you what they are. So right here, text color, and you know what? I think I might have hurt Miss McLaughlin's feeling, so I'm gonna pick dark teal. I think that's kind of a tealy color. There you go. Yay! And I'm going to close this out so I have a bigger screen for you. Is that better? Absolutely. And apparently I can make the screen bigger too by just sliding these down, so it's probably easier for you to see. What'd you say? That looks awesome. Okay, now I'm also, another way of adding text isn't just a text box, but actually the word art. So, um, my name is Fergie, the master, oops, just one S, of the universe. There we go. Oh, you know what? I want to put that on two lines. Fergie, the master of the universe. So, I just click shift and enter, and I get two lines on it. And there it is. Again, totally boring. Miss Ferguson, yes, I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Why why did you have to press Shift Enter to make it on oh, that, two lines? So I can uh, I don't know. That's why Google does its stuff. <laughs> if you press, I think if you just had pressed Enter, it would have popped right on your screen. That's right. Yes. And so I'm really glad you remembered to hit Shift with Enter because then it puts it on two lines. All right, so I absolutely, I'm once again looking for a fun font that goes with being the master of the universe. Ooh, here we go. Nice and bold. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yes. And what color, Miss Kiner, should I do this? Ooh, I like purple. How about purple? Purple. Light purple? There we go. And it's got an outline right now. If you're down with the outline, that's cool. But I don't think I want an outline. You can either make it transparent or in this case, because the background's white. There we go. All right. So I have my name is Fergie, Master of the Universe. Hmm. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is this is not that interesting. I can go over here and I can upload a picture, I mean a video. So I don't have any videos in here that I want. So I'm gonna click on the new, I'm gonna do a file upload. And on my computer, I have in my desktop, a file that I am going to upload. And I think I have it backgrounds because I keep fun stuff in my backgrounds. And you know what, this one looks kind of cool, space, because I'm master of the universe. So let's pick that one. So it's going to upload. And down here, it tells me it's uploading. Give it a second, upload. There we go. And there it is. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm just like totally on fire here. All right, so here it is right here. Now, the thing is, it's in my drive and only I can view it. So if I put it in right now, nobody but me can review it because it, it comes in kind of private. So I'm gonna click on the share button. All I did was right click on my video and share. And right now I'm going to get a shareable link and anyone with the link can view. So I'm gonna click done. And when I put it in my slides, because Ms. Kine or Ms. McLaughlin are in there, they're gonna tell me that they can see it or not. So now I'm gonna pop over to my Google Slides again. Somebody's been busy on my screen. I don't know. <laughs> oh, who I'm gonna find out who the culprit is. I can tell they've been busy it's because there's a box around it and it tells me right there, Miss McLaughlin has been busy messing up my screen when I was doing something else. 
Okay. Well, I mean, you didn't say that we couldn't, so I decided that I would just play around a little bit. Why shouldn't I do that? Well, apparently, thing called respect. You're not supposed to be messing my stuff unless I say it, but you know what? I actually don't care. You can totally get to that because whatever. But my sons were telling me that on Minecraft, if you mess up their stuff, that's called griefing. So when you're working together on stuff, make sure that it's okay to mess up other people's stuff or change your stuff and if they're totally down with it or not. So here is uh, the redone version of Fergie Master of the Universe. So we're gonna go with that. And I am going to insert the video that I uploaded on my computer. And it was in my Google Drive. So I'm gonna click on that. Just play the background elevator music. Do, 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 do. Would it be in your recent? Yeah, you're probably right. But you know, I don't want to wait for it because it's already in my drive. There it was. Okay, Perfect. so right here, and I'm going to select it. We'll do another little background music. Do, do. <laughs> here it is. All right. Okay, so here's my little video right here. And I'm going to, I can minimize it and change it and put it in the back if I want. But because this is kind of a cool background, check it out. That is kind of a cool background. I actually want to take up my whole slide. So I'm going to click on it. Dang it, escape. There we go. I'm going to click on the outside of it and drag it over. Stop playing. Okay, I am like on rock and fire today. Okay, now it's got the little dots on it. There I guess you can click off and click on. I was struggling away. Okay, so I'm gonna take it. Okay, it happens. Yes, so notice that when I'm dragging it over, I don't wanna resize it because sometimes when you make one side narrower than what it's supposed to in its natural, natural layout, it can look funny. So notice that when I'm gonna lay it over, it's gonna hang over my slide a little bit. I'm okay with that. But just be aware that when that happens, you might need to just kind of shift it a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on it and order, and I'm going to send it all the way to the back. So now my text is now on top. And I'm going to notice that when you have this, I'm going to click off of it and you double click on it, the format options pop up. So the format options of my Word pop up. So I'm going to click off. Now I want my format options in my video. I can have it set to time, which it's going to start at and end, and I can autoplay when presenting. So those are some options that I have. Now, when I look at this, I notice that my text is kind of invisible. So I'm sorry, Ms. McLaughlin, your teal is too dark. So I'm going to make it a little lighter so it pops out when I click off. Oop, I did the whole background. Let me, you know what, undo. Undo is my second favorite button. I actually just want the text to be that way and I should have picked on the A, not the text fill. Okay, so now I'm gonna change this color. There we go. Isn't that easier to read now? And same with the Master of the Universe. I think I'm gonna do this one in a lighter um, purple so it stands out a little bit more. There we go. So what do you think? Looks great. Excellent job. All right, so we are about 10, 12, 13 minutes into this presentation. So I think now is a great time for a brain break. What do you guys think? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what you got. Okay, okay fine. So, brain break. We're here for the people that have backed up, they're going to get caught up with us. So when you get to this brain break, if you're one of those people that backed up, you can actually skip through this brain break and get caught up to where we are. So we're going to take a moment right now and do some fun brain twizzlers. You guys ready? Let's go. Are you in YouTube land ready to? Okay. I want you guys in YouTube to put your answers in the chat. I want to see what you say. Okay. So our first brain level twizzler for you is what has four leg leaves but fully can't run? Any well, answers, ladies? I don't know. Really? Take a guess. What has four legs? A dog. And can't run. <laughs> a chair. Uh, close. It's actually a table. You know your dining room table has leaves? Oh, 
Yes. Now I get it. Yeah, you get it. Okay. So that was totally corny, I know, but we can't give you the jokes that you really want to hear. You get the corny jokes because we're teachers. All right. What can be found once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years? Um, I don't know. Okay, Miss Connor, what do you say? Oh, once in a minute, twice in a moment, and never in a thousand years? The purse. Um, I wouldn't be very good on um, who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have stumped both Mrs. Kiner and myself. Okay, how about you guys on YouTube? Anybody have any guesses? All right, so let me show you. There's one letter M in the word minute. There is two letter M's in the word moment. And there are no letter M's in a thousand years. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, I'm on fire. Okay, one more. Okay, you're driving a bus. Of course, you guys totally can drive a bus because you're like 13, right? All right, the bus starts off empty and two people get off at the first stop. The next stop, eight people get off and two, or eight people get on, two people get off. The next stop, five people get on, three people get off. So the bus is yellow. Does this feel a little bit like math problems you guys did? Yes. So the bus, well, here's the question, ready? Yep. What color is the driver's hair? Mm. Teal. <laughs> it's teal, it might be. Miss, Miss Veloso, is your hair teal? Nope. You're it's the bus brown. driver, it's the color of your hair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man. Like I said, totally on fire. So, Ms. Kiner is going to show you how to make amazing graphics in Google Slides. So, she is going to come in and show you how to do that. I sure am. All right. So um, we're gonna do some amazing things with images in Google Slides. And I'm going to go ahead and go back over to our presentation. And um, I really like that uh, we're working on it together. Uh, one of the things that I can do is um, pop over here into the title. And since uh, we decided this was gonna be all about me or all about us, um, I'm going to go ahead and change that. So you can change your title even after someone else has started. So you can always work together on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a slide for myself now. And I'm going to add a blank slide. Okay, and what I'm going to be sharing with you today is um, how to create a silhouette and something I really, um, something about me that you should know is that I love pets. And so I'm going to use one of my pets for the silhouette. So I have this one already um, on my, on the hard drive of my computer. Um, if you had um, images on your phone, you could easily um, transfer them over to your Google Drive if you have the Google Drive app on your phone, and then you could pull them in from there. So you have different options of getting images on your, onto your presentation. Um, so a silhouette, I'm sitting here thinking, um, does everyone know what a silhouette is? Ms. McLaughlin, Ms. I feel like my silhouette is like it's one of those like old timey pictures where it's like an outline and then it's all one color and like I'm thinking old, old, old school. Dude, mm. I thought it was candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a silhouette is kind of like that, Miss McLaughlin. You're really close. So yes. um, if you're not familiar with that, I am gonna show you what that looks like today. The first thing I have to do though, is I need to crop this image. So um, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, what do y'all think? What, how, how should I go about cropping the image? I mean, are we wanting like the super fast way or like the multi-click way? Oh, super fast, of course. Okay, so your mouse is on top of the picture right now. If you just double click really fast, it, it should bring up the crop lines. 
Oh, perfect. They Boom, there it is for me. Thank you, Ms. McLaughlin. So what I'm gonna do now, you can see that there are some little black edges to this image and I am going to put my arrow right next to it and click and drag and I'm gonna crop the image. Whoops, that happens sometimes and that is because my arrow has to be right up next to that black handle. So you do want the arrow right next to the handle and that will let you crop instead of move. That is the fuzziest dog I've ever seen. <laughs> she has a lot of fur. But she's so cute. Oh, thank you. All right, so now I am clicking and dragging and notice I clicked and dragged from a corner. It's important to drag from a corner so that your picture stays proportional. If I had um, been dragging, clicking and dragging from the side, it would have distorted my image. So um, it would have squished her picture together and then it wouldn't really look like her. So you always want to drag from a corner. And um, next, what I'm going to do so that I can see some detail when I'm doing this silhouette is I want to hit my zoom button here in the top menu. And I'm going to click on the slide one time. And it did make this jump over just a little, but that's okay. Okay. So now I'm going to start my silhouette. And before I do, when you are on your Zoom tool, remember that you need to turn that off. And a way to do that is to click on the select tool, the arrow in the top. So I'm clicking on that arrow. And now I'm going to use one of my line tools to start my silhouette. So I'm gonna click on this drop down next to the line tool. And I'm gonna to go to the curve. So I'm choosing the curve line. And the way that you create the silhouette is that you're going to click and drag around the image. Now, this is more of her profile. This is the puppy's profile. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag and stop and then do a little click. And now I am just tracing around the image and I zoomed in so that I could get a little more detail. Now, every time that you click, it allows you to turn and make a little curve. So I clicked here at the curve of her mouth and I'm going to go up here to her kind of the bottom of her mouth and I'm going to click again Again, where I want to start curving up the side. Hey, Mrs. Heiner, what would happen if you had your, your clicks way too close? What would it do? Oh, sometimes if it's too close, one of the things that happens is it um, finishes, it finishes the shape. And if that happens, it closes it up and you have to start over. So that's why, right. So that's why I do want to be pretty careful, especially when I go right around this area. I don't wanna to get too close together with my lines. It's okay if I'm off a little bit and you're gonna see why in just a moment. And I'm gonna get a little faster here where it's not quite as detailed. And when I go up to her ear, I'm gonna click. And I actually wanna bring out this ear and I'm gonna do click just above it. So now I'm gonna go right down the back. And this is just a profile of her, not all of her. And now when I get to the end, I'm gonna click and it's gonna close it up. Ta-da! So now it's, it's a silhouette, you can't, it's hard to tell just yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and click behind. I'm gonna click on the background and I'm gonna press delete. And here is the silhouette. 
That looks yeah. awesome, Mrs. Kiner. Is there a way that we could make that border a little thicker or bolder? Oh, absolutely. So I'm gonna click back on the image and notice that I've selected it because I have my blue handles all the way around. And I can go to my uh, border color, or I'm sorry, my, yeah, my border color. And I can go to, um, what color did you want it? How about orange? Orange. I know, I didn't go with teal, it's crazy. All right. And now I'm gonna to go to the weight to make it thicker. And I'm gonna to go to eight. How's that? That looks awesome. Could we put like, could we fill in the actual picture? Absolutely, we could fill it in. So to do that, I'm gonna again, make sure my image is selected. And I'm gonna go up here to my fill color, which is my bucket. So when Ooh, I can we make it my blue? Bucket, and Ms. Ferguson, did I hear you say something? Yeah, can we make it blue? Blue, okay. How about like a dark blue? Ooh, yeah. I like that. It reminds me of Sam Houston because our colors were orange and blue. All right, so that's, now it's becoming a little bit like a mascot. Yes. Now let me, show, let me show you one other um, trick. So the lines are a little thick. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and leave it like that for now. I'm gonna click off of the picture for just a minute and then I'm gonna double click and notice that all the little points where I clicked are showing up now. Let me zoom into that. And so what that allows me to do is um, tweak just a little bit. So if I wanted to make her ear a little more uh, longer here, I could drag it up. So you have the ability to drag on any of these little points um, to bring them in. That's cool. So you don't have to start all over if you don't necessarily like it. You can just mess with the points that you started. Absolutely. Awesome. So I'm gonna double click out here and that's gonna take those points off. And I'm gonna hold down my shift key and drag to keep um, the picture proportional. And now um, I'm going to add some things about um, why I love my pets and what we do, um, some of the things that we do that make her part of the family. Um, so now I'm going to talk some more about um, just images and what you can do with them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into insert image and I'm uploading it from my computer. And one of the things that makes her part of the family and one of the things we do um, is we dress up on Halloween. And so she gets a costume also. And so I am going to just click and drag to um, cut a little bit of that area off. And then again, I'm gonna hold down my shift key and click and drag from a corner to shrink it and keep it proportional. And now I'm going to, um, put what's called on here, I'm gonna add a little something to it and put a shape to it. So did you know you could add shape to your images? And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to um, go up here to where you normally would crop the image and I'm gonna click on the little drop down right beside it. And I'm going to choose shapes. Ooh, can we do a heart? Hearts are awesome. Well, I can try a heart and what we have to keep in mind is what type of picture we have already. So when I click the heart, how does that look with this image? Yeah, not so good. <laughs> right, so I wanna pick something that maybe is, um, fits this image a little better. And this is just gonna be a simple one to start. It's just kind of an oval um, and I'm going to shrink this a little. I'm actually going to enlarge the silhouette and I can fill the silhouette if I want. I can click on, um, I can fill it with images. And then here at the top is a, is a little circle and that lets me turn this image any way that I want. So you could turn your silhouette into a collage if you wanted to. Absolutely, I could do that and that would look pretty cool. 
And for time's sake today, I'm not gonna have time to do all of that, but I'm gonna put um, just a couple more examples in here. So one of the things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get one more, one more picture. And um, another, um, something else that we do is we love going to the park and um, she likes to chase the ducks. So now let me go ahead and try out that heart, Miss Ferguson, that you mentioned before. That Aww. heart, absolutely, doesn't that fit much better on that picture? It does, and not it, every shape is best. It was a perfect square. Absolutely. So now if I go here um, to, my, to my border weight, I can thicken that line around it and I can change the color. So if I wanted it to be red, like a heart, like love, I could do that. Or if I wanted to stick with my theme and go with orange, I could also do that. So I'm gonna shrink it a little and I'm gonna drop it right in here about where her heart would be. Aw, she loves ducks. She loves ducks. And now I have one more fun trick to show you with the images. And she also loves squirrels. Squirrel! Squirrel. <laughs> and one of the things she loves about them is um, she does like to chase them. Surprise, and surprise. So here, um, I'm gonna go back up to my mask. And this time, instead of a shape, I'm gonna go to my call out. Now, one of the things I could use is an oval call out. You see there's different uh, call out choices here. So kind of like a cartoon. And I could make it look like she is talking to the squirrel by clicking on this gold diamond for the call out tail, I'm gonna call that a tail, and you can move that wherever you want it to be. Oh my gosh, I had no idea you could do that. That is awesome, Ms. Kiner. Right, and then if I go back up here into the call outs, let's say, um, oh, instead of talking to her, to the squirrel, I could move it over here, and maybe she is thinking about it and thinking, hmm, I sure would like to chase that squirrel. Okay. I like it, it looks super cute. So I could continue on with my images. Like Ms. Ferguson said, it would make a great collage in the silhouette. And I'm using my, um, my curve tool to make my silhouette and my fill bucket to color it in. And then um, you can try out all of the cool shapes and call outs that you can use with your images. Okay, That's and awesome. um, we're gonna be moving on. And before we do, we have another quick um, brain break. Ooh, I can't wait, I love brain breaks. Maybe I'll get this one right this time. All right. So how many triangles do you think there are in this image? Uh, four? I see one on the top, one in the middle, one on the bottom. Okay, I could see four. And Miss Miss McLaughlin, what did you say? I think my favorite number is twelve, so I'm just gonna say twelve. Oh, twelve. Way to what? count, Miss McLaughlin. <laughs> I mean, I stick with what I know and what I like. Okay, so you guys on YouTube, what do you think? How many is in there? Ah! All right. <laughs> Miss Ferguson, you 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 um, I jumped ahead of you. I'm so sorry. My mouse just clicked. So that's okay. So I was totally wrong. There so, are 18, and you can see how you can uh, put those 18 together. All right. So thanks for sticking with me, taking a brain break, and now we're moving on to Miss McLaughlin. Awesome, okay, so as you can see, we have Mrs. Kiner's and Mrs. Ferguson's beautiful slides here. Now what I need to do is I need to add a new slide for myself. So I'm gonna come up here to the corner to the plus sign, and then I'm gonna pick the blank slide, okay? Because I like a clean canvas. 
So the first thing that I always do whenever I start a new slide is I like to kind of design a theme. There are some themes that you, I can choose from in Google Slides, but I kind of like to do my own thing. So in order to change this slide to go with what I want, I'm going to go to View and Master. Now, here's the really cool thing about Master Slides. I have all of the layouts that Google Slides has built in. So I can change my background color. I can change the font. I can add anything I want. So do y'all know what color I'm going to choose for my slide? What teal. color? Maybe teal? Totally nah, teal. Always teal. <laughs> always teal. Okay. So now that I have my color, I'm going to make some fun word art. So Mrs. Laughlin. And then I'm going to change everything at once. So do a second word art. Uh, rules the world. So Mrs. Ferguson is master of the universe. I rule the world. She has to share. All right. So I have both of these selected at the same time. All that means what I did is I clicked on one and then I held down the control key on my keyboard. So now I can mess with both of them at the exact same time. So I do not like Ariel, never have. So let's try, let's go with Acme because I like the bubbles, it's fun. And then let's change this to pink and let's make the border a little, little more bold. And now I'm going to resize and I like this up in the corner, okay? I like that, what do you guys think? I love it. Love it. And it looks, it's, it's so bold and flashy, but here's the thing. Look what I did to Mrs. Kiner's slide. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want to do that. So she's fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The look on her face says different. <laughs> so I'm going to go back into my master and I'm going to change my background back to white because that's what Mrs. Kiner had. And then I need to delete my word art. Now, the reason why I shouldn't play with the master slides when I'm working with a group of people is because it changes all of their slides. So if they don't want the same background as you, then it kind of messes with what they have. So there is a way to just change the background on my slide. So I have my slide selected. I'm going to go to my background. Here I can change the color to teal. Nope, I don't want to add the theme. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Undo. Add the theme. Okay, now I'm just going to hit done. Don't add the theme, done. So now my slide is the only one that has teal in the background. I'm going to go back and do my word art. So Mrs. McLaughlin and then rules the world because let's just face it, I do, right? Okay, move that, select both of them, change my font, change my color, the border, boom, done. Now, now that I have this, I like to link to multiple slides. So that way I can kind of jump around the slide deck, but always get back to my home. So I'm going to insert a shape because I'm going to create a button. So I'm gonna make this little button right here. And this is actually a text box. So I'm going to link this to another slide that is going to show you a hobby of mine. Okay, so let's change that to be bigger, put that in the center. All right, so here's how I'm going to do this. First, I need to make a second slide to link to. So I'm going to highlight my slide. You see the orange around it. I'm gonna hit control D as in dog on my keyboard. That duplicates that slide for me. So now that I've duplicated, I need to delete everything that's on it. Okay, on this button, I have it highlighted. So this button is going to be linked. I'm gonna come up to my menu up here at the top, my toolbar and hit insert link. Now, right here, this is what is going to allow me to jump to other slides. So I need to link this to slide four, hit apply. 
So now when I go into present mode or when I show the whole slide on my whole screen and I hit hobbies, it jumps directly to that slide. So one of my hobbies is reading. I love to read. So my favorite, there we go, hobby is reading. Do y'all like that font? Is it cool if I keep changing it to Acme? Apparently, that's the only one you can do. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with a different one. There you go. Change it up a little. Boom. You gotta there change go. that color. How is that? Different color. Different color. What color, Mrs. Ferguson? Uh, pink. Pink. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> it makes it really hard to read on that teal. Yes. It's just kind of color. Fonts. Uh, let's pick a lighter color, like uh, maybe a, a shade of sh uh, just a lighter shade. What if you go with the lighter pink? Oh, that better. looks so much better. It's a lot easier to read. Okay, so I don't want just a static picture on this slide. What I mean by static, it, it's not moving. It's just there. I actually want to find a reading GIF. Now, I say GIF. Ms. Kiner, do you say GIF or GIF? Um, animated GIF. I say GIF. Y'all are both wrong. It's good GIF. It, oh, you're right. Our team decided that we were going to smush. We were just going to compromise and not go with GIF or GIF. We just say good GIF. It works. Okay, so I'm going to, I typed in reading GIF. And then I like SpongeBob because he's just goofy and silly. So I I clicked on the, the GIF right here that has SpongeBob on it. I'm going to right click and hit copy image address. Come back to our slide and then go to insert image by URL. So because I copied that image address, it's a URL, it's a link. So I can hit control V as in Victor. There it is and hit insert. So here is my reading gift. Make this guy a little bigger. And there you go. Now, how do I, if I were to be in present mode and I jumped to my hobbies slide, how do I get back to my main slide? I don't have a button here. So that means I need to now put a new button onto this slide. So shapes, I like this little rounded guy. I'm going to put home because I want this to take me back to that main page. Wow, way too big. Still too big. Better. Okay, so I have him highlighted. So I'm going to go to this insert link again and then slides in this presentation. I can go to previous slide because it will take me back to slide three and then hit apply. So now, Miss hey, McLaughlin, I have a question for you. Okay. What happens if you decide to change the order of your slides? Ooh, if I decide to change the order of my slides, so if I made this guy, if I switched them, now if I come in here to the link, I need to say go to the next slide. So I have to tell it where now to to um, link to. Does that makes sense. Yes, it does. Did that answer your question? So I have a, a suggestion that I help people out when they're making theirs. Is okay. Instead of using previous and next slides, especially if you have people working on it and they're inserting slides in random places, it could mess your links up. So instead of going next or previous, don't ever choose those. What I tell them instead is choose the actual slide number so that if you end up shuffling your slides, it still jumps to the correct slide number because it remembers where it was originally. So Ooh. when you change slide two and you insert a slide, so now your slide's three, it remembers where you wanted originally. So That's that, a really good tip, Mrs. Ferguson, thanks. I get them every now and then. <laughs> you do, you help me. I learn something from you every single time. Yay! I know, right? Okay, so just to kind of recap for everyone, I took you guys through um, the master slide. So how to change the master, um, how to change the background on your slide, and then how to link 
between two different slides, as well as inserting a GIF into a slide deck. Now, Mrs. Ferguson or Mrs. Kinder, do y'all have any questions about what um, we kind of went over? I, I do have a question, Ms. McLaughlin. Okay. Because you actually, you showed two really cool um, shortcuts that you shared today. And one awesome. I think I was, shortcuts. You, a shortcut is like, um, well, you did a, a keystroke, I think, instead of a right mouse click. And I know sometimes those sh uh, keystrokes are time savers. And I think you duplicated a slide and then when you paste it in your GIF, um, yes. You use some some keys on your keyboard. Can you tell us what those are again? Absolutely. So if I want to duplicate something, and that doesn't just mean slides. So if I wanted to duplicate um, this rules the world on my keyboard, I would hold down the control key and the D key at the same time. So control D as in dog. And then now I've duplicated whatever I had highlighted. Awesome. One. And then if I want to copy and paste, there are some other keystrokes that I can do. So I'm just going to use rules the world. So control C as in cat, that's copy. Now I'm going to go to my next slide and I'm going to use control V as in Victor to paste. Awesome. And that's exactly how I copied that link and I um, changed it over to, I pasted it into the um, link insert link tab. Got it. Well, I was just checking our YouTube chat. They're really quiet on the chat today. So does anybody in YouTube have a question for us before we go off today? If you okay. guys think of um, a, a question later, you can totally um, reach out to our our team um, through, or you can go back and kind of rewatch uh, the video to see if if your answer or your question is answered. Now, we still want to see what you guys are creating. Just like last week, we wanted to see your your creations, your wee videos. So this week, we want you guys to create a slide all about you. So your hobbies, what you like to do, um, places you like to go, anything like that. And then I'm gonna show y'all real quick how to share these slides with our team. So you're gonna go to cfisc.net. So that's our homepage. And then once you get there, you're going to click on the learning at home button. And then you're going to scroll down a little bit until you see the digital learning lab little button there. Click on that button. And this is going to take you to, you can, there are two ways. You can take this link to the, the flyer and it will have a submission link there or right here, the share what you created. Here's our middle school. So hit continue. This will take you to a Google doc. Now in this Google doc, we want you to submit your first and last name. If you're currently enrolled in CFISD or in CFISD school, Hit next, and then tell us what campus you're at. Select the session that you attended, and then here's where those shortcuts would be really great. So you can come up here, copy this link, get the share link, get shareable, can view, so control C, come back to this, form and control V as in Victor, and then hit submit. And that's it. We are really looking forward to seeing what you guys create this week on these slides. Hey, thank you for joining us. This has been amazing. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Yes, make sure to come back next week. Next week, we are talking about Google Sites. It's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna take you guys what we did here on slides, we're just gonna take it even farther because we like Google. Uh, although Tammy might disagree. She's Google is cool too. There's just tons of tools out there. We gotta learn them all. So we're that gonna is take true. you through the learning journey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this was stop two. Next we're going on to stop three. There we all go. Right. Sounds great. Great job, y'all. 
We hope to see everyone next week, next Thursday morning at 1030. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Bye.